All right, I'm either gonna have a bloody massacre looking scene or it's gonna look really pretty. Um, let's hope for a really pretty. <laughs> Howdy, howdy, this is Claire Lawrence. Okay, so I'm gonna challenge myself a little bit here. And I'm gonna try and limit myself to three colors. And we're going to paint those on here, uh, on my tumbler here with a, a brush and just really saturate this. Have some nice blends going on. And then when all's done, I'm gonna add gold to it and do some drips in gold. So, or, I'm doing it again. Why do I always do this with gold? Not gold, brass, brass. I'm using brass, this one right here, brass. See, this is brass. Okay, so I'm gonna do some drips with brass uh, afterwards. So we're gonna have very saturated uh, tumbler, do some drips and see what happens. All right, these are the colors I used today. This is Copic and that's its number and name right there. And then I've also got these guys that I used as well. Now I have a question for you guys. I'm gonna put this at the beginning of the video and also at the end, but I read all the comments. Uh, I know I'm bad about answering them, but I do read all the comments and thank you, thank you, thank you for all the com wonderful comments. Um, but I need to, I have a question. Would you guys like it if I put the colors at the beginning of the video or at the end, or if you like both, let me know. Thanks. All right, so the last time I messed around with this color, uh, me and this particular one here, this is by Copic, <laughs> which you can barely see right here. Uh, it's dark red. Uh, I did a painting with Scarlet in my studio and I did a lot of reds. I don't remember if it was when we did one of the bubble paintings or not, but all I know is that my entire surface area, it looked like some kind of, I don't know, murder scene or something like that. I had red everywhere. So it's a very, very, very dark, almost bloodish red, but I've got in combination of that, I've got a very bright pink, this uh, Senora Magenta and uh, I've got a purple, so that will tone that down, so, or change the scene so it doesn't look so terrible. Anyway, I've also got a little cup here with some alcohol, so if I need to move colors around, and I have my alcohol close by, I'm almost wondering if I should, yeah, I'm going to put a little bit more in my cup, why not? And i got a very wide brush, so... Let's get started making a mess because I'm good at that. So these bottles here, you can usually leave them open. Oh, look at all that dry stuff that comes off of that. Okay, that was pretty. Move that to the side. Uh, the opening is small enough that it doesn't evaporate. And one of these bottles is almost empty and I think yeah, it's this guy. So I want to see if I can use up the rest of that guy up. But I want to keep them open available uh, just to make it easier. Now this one here, because of its design, unless I keep it upright, it's sometimes the leak. So let's see, do I have anything that I can keep it upright? Nope. <laughs> oh well. Okay, so I may have to keep on putting the lid on this guy. Anyway. So let's get busy making a mess. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do is just give this something. You know what, I wonder if I should hold it by the handle and do that. I think that'll work better. Okay, so I'm gonna be doing a lot of turning just to keep the colors moving. And there's a little bit of color on my brush right now. I'm not that worried about it because it is going to get lost with all this red and pinks I'm going to be putting down. And I'm going to try and start with the pinks and have the lighter color up towards the top. 
go towards uh, red and then at the base, uh, bring in the violet purple. Or at least that's the theory anyway. I'm sticking to it. Yeah, see how that's getting towards the end there. And just keep on turning this around. Keep things flowing. And then I'm going to use my brush and just kind of push this stuff around here. I'm double checking to make sure you guys are still in camera because I got to move quickly. Sometimes I'll dip my brush into the color that's on the uh, paper down below just to add color here and there. Okay. Keep that moving. Now here's the tricky part. I gotta open up the top lid on this. Okay, all right, I'm balancing it precariously. I'm gonna get this little there. I saw some white showing through. Okay, do some drips here. See what I mean by it's a very, very rich red. I'm gonna dip a little bit in alcohol just to Give something to move around and then just kind of brush it around just kind of coax in it okay good that's not as deep of a red and I am kind of okay with that I wouldn't mind having a little bit more so I'm gonna fan it out towards the bottom a little bit It's still balanced precariously. And when this gets to a, uh, a situation where I really like it, I've got my dryer on standby and I can add that to it. So this is the, um, the violet. And I added quite a bit there. Of course, I know you guys know me by now, and you know that I like my violets. And I'm just going to go into the red and just start blending it up right. And bringing it up to the pink area. I'm pushing it into the cracks just to make sure. And then I'm going to wipe it on the bottom real quick. I'm picking up a little bit of the magenta just so it has a couple colors on the bottom and is interesting. All right, now I need to, you know, I'm actually thinking about it, a little bit more magenta here. Trying to clean off my brush a little bit so I'm not putting so much violet towards the top. And by having it fluid and I keep moving this around, when it does dry, it dries in really pretty blends. And it has a nice watercolory look to it, even though it's very saturated. I put the dryer on it, but I'm gonna keep moving this around so it keeps those watery blend look.
you notice here, this looks like it's really shiny. And it's actually not, it's dry, but it's not completely dry. In other words, it's not gonna move anymore, but it's got a layer of tackiness to it that takes a while for uh, that to, uh, to completely evaporate. It's got a lot of pigment in there. Okay, I'm gonna set this upright for a second. Be right back. Okay, so I am ready for the brass. I was thinking originally about having drips that go down the cup, but now that I'm looking at this and the way the colors are, it's really dark. Um, I'm thinking about doing the, the drips horizontally. I think that'll look a lot prettier. So that's what we're gonna work on right now. And what I've got here is I've got the brass um, mixed in with uh, extra alcohol. So that way when it comes off, it already comes off diluted. And uh, the little uh, brass bits want to kind of flicker around in the alcohol solution. So I'm gonna add some drips in there. And again, I'm gonna be just twirling this like mad. I'm gonna see if I can get in a little closer so you can see what's going on. But again, like when you do metallics, make sure you shake it up really good before you use it because the metallics will float in the solution. And when the solution settles, it will go down to the bottom. All right. I'm gonna dry it in my lap here. see that and that's just with one pass really pretty okay again give a little quickie shake before I use it and I always put my finger over the tip area and then I'm gonna lay in some drips enough that it tries to find the other bit and connect with it And then as I'm twirling, it leaves deposits of gold around. All right, I'm going to do the dryer with my right hand this time. Because there's extra alcohol in there, it reactivates all the alcohol underneath it, meaning the inks underneath that, and they have a tendency to flow. And you see how it lightened up this area in here. And it kind of lightened up this area as well. So I'm going to make a big jump and so it doesn't look too even. I'm just basically moving the particles around, which is why I keep twirling it. I'm gonna hit with the dryer real quick. This is really pretty. And I don't even need to do a whole lot with this with resin. So I'm not going to fight this little groove. I'm just going to go with it and let this gold travel in this groove. Just have it work in my favor. close to the rim here. Okay, a lot of bit close to the rim here.
Last but not least, I'm going to try and do this on the bottom. I don't know if I'm going to show anything. So I got a little bit on the bottom there and a little bit came up around the side right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit right on the rim. So it looks like it's intentional. And just let it float on down and connect. Okay, float on down, that was a hint. Come on ink, float. I know you talk to your projects. I do all the time. All right, try that up. Yeah, that's looking sweet. All right. Oh, that color's a lot better there. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so you can see the the lines, and let me zoom you in here. See the little particles of brass that it deposits everywhere? Really, really pretty. Now I could do it so that it was top to bottom full of these, and that would look gorgeous too, because of how saturated the color is. You're still gonna get really pretty reactions out of that. I just want a few lines in there. And I think with the resin coat, I think I'm just going to do a clear resin coat on this. I don't, hmm, am I even going to add anything more to it? Probably not. There's the bottom there, a little bit of gold there. So, so super simple, but it's got a lot of punch. And just use your favorite colors. Pick coat, I would... Definitely pick colors that kind of get along together because you go back and forth with them. In other words, like, you know, a blue, purple range, you know, oranges and, you know, yellows, that kind of thing. You know, things that are close together in the, you know, the color wheel family. Um, having it go from a lighter to darker type tones is, is helpful. I mean, if you wanted to do all neons, do it. You know, that would be fun too. Well, you know me, I like my neons. Anyway, yeah. I think it's pretty. There you go. All right, these are the colors I used today. This is Copic, and that's its number and name right there. And then I've also got these guys that I used as well. Now I have a question for you guys. I'm gonna put this at the beginning of the video and also at the end. But I read all the comments. Uh, I know I'm bad about answering them, but I do read all the comments and thank you, thank you, thank you for all the com wonderful comments. Um, but I need to, I have a question. Would you guys like it if I put the color to the beginning of the video or at the end, or if you like both, let me know. Thanks. All right, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. Definitely hit the bell to get notified. Next time I put a video up and check the links in the description below for my Etsy store. Uh, also my Amazon store, which it seemed to be having a little bit of a problem right now. It's got a bunch of links of uh, all the products I use in there. I get a tiny bit of commission, but it doesn't change your price at all, so click safely. Um, so if it's not going to the links, I'm sorry I'm working on it, um, but this is something I'm working on with Amazon right now. Anyway, uh, as far as resin goes, all my colors, I get them from Artist Till Death, and there's a coupon code down there too. There you go.